Senator Karina Villa, who is the senator for the 25th District, uh, which is the uh, area that includes so many of our great suburbs. Uh, Karina, how are you doing this af- afternoon? I'm doing great, Patty. How are you? I am well. I was I was about to start to describe like the Senate and the difference between the House and and the Senate. And I realized you have spent time in both. You started out as a legislator in the House of Representatives, and you are now in the upper chamber. How well? First of all, um, how would you explain to folks the responsibilities and c- the contrast between the House and the Senate? Well, it's very similar in many ways, but it's also been um, a a different transition, right? Because when I started in the house, uh, we had uh, dinners and get togethers and were in and out of each other's offices. And when I got inaugurated for the Senate, it was in a very um, isolating way, right? Because of COVID. And uh, so the first few months was just very, very different. So getting to know the ropes and natural ways that you would do uh, when you're just interacting with folks and and talking with colleagues, that didn't really happen this time around. Um, The district is obviously twice as big, so it's a much grander um, area and responsibility in that aspect. Um, and just we have, uh, you know, the 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 Senate appoint is is who does the appointments um, for for um, the the different positions uh, within within um, the you know the director roles and such through state agencies. So uh, we it's, it's a greater responsibility. It's it's a very it's similar in many ways, but also uh, also different. Yeah, and I remember when I was uh, in Springfield, they would call uh, the house the frat house and the Senate the uh, senior citizen's home. <laughs> That's, <what> they- <laughs> That's so funny, but I will take offense to that because <laughs> I am not a senior citizen. And <laughs> when I was in the house, I didn't feel like it was a frat, but it definitely was um, it, it was a lively and rambunctious crowd. One of the things that's pretty interesting is that in the House, when you're having um, a debate on the floor, you just kind of go back and forth, back and forth, and you can kind of interrupt each other. In the Senate, the president has to um, uh, kind of give you the ability to speak. So like if I were to say something and then someone wants to ask the question, I, they would have to wait until they're called on. And then for, in order for me to respond, I would have to wait to get called on. And then in order for them to respond, they have to wait to get called on. So it's like much slower. And sometimes it's like a little bit frustrating because you just want to like say it. But at the same time, it saves you from like uh, <laughs> saying maybe some of the things that you might want to say immediately. It gives you a little bit of a second to kind of think through what you're going to say. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, that is very different as well. There is a, diff- a different tone, but I, you have uh, there was a, a lot done this session. We're going to talk to uh, Senator Aquino and uh, President Harmon coming up a little bit later. There was a piece of legislation in particular I wanted to talk to you about. Uh, I am I, I am a survivor of rape, and I know in this state and across the country, we have a lot of issues when it comes to cross-referencing, when it comes to evidence, when it comes to the backlog, uh, and, and then, you know, on top of everything that a survivor goes through, even coming forward or trying to file a report. Talk to us a little bit about the work that you've done and the legislation that you were uh, successful in achieving. Thank you so much for that, um, Patty, and for your openness as well to share your story. So HB 1739 was uh, a bill that was very near and dear to my heart. It talks about the the tracking of um, sexual assault kits, and uh, that's a very important part of the bill. But along with that, it also um, stresses that uh, there's rights for survivors. So if um, there's not going to be the court process or, or the, the district attorneys deciding not to go ahead with prosecution, that they would have an informative session with the, the survivor. And before I had experienced this trauma as a school social worker with one of my students, I just never knew that there was potential if if there wasn't enough evidence or, or this, you know, the, the state's attorney didn't think that there was enough evidence to prosecute that, um, Folks just don't get prosecuted. Right. Um, and th- this is very eye opening for me, especially when it came to one of my students who's, a, you know, a little girl uh, in third grade who just was um, 
adamant about you know wanting justice it was it was just extremely eye opening to me that um at a point it, it was like the case just kind of went into thin air and we're like what's happening with this situation uh they never got notified no one told them that there wasn't oh. going to be any charges um and and so that's just something that this um little girl's going to have to live with the rest of her life knowing that uh, this person was never po- prosecuted. Um, so this bill says that that victims then ha- have to be notified uh, that that uh, that that decision has been made. I am so grateful because that's th- there's never going to be anything that can fill that you know that pain and make it better. But there are things along the way, and and I and I am so, I I am so emboldened by the fact that there was, or, or I feel so grateful that there was a third grader that you've worked with who not only felt so passionately about it, but then affected you in a way where when you were in the position to be a champion for that uh, on behalf of so many survivors, I'm grateful for that. Thank you, Penny. And I will tell you this. Many of the times when I'm uh, in the Senate, it can be it can be intimidating to bring forth a big bill, and it can be uh, kind of overwhelming. Like, how am I going to get this through committee? How am I get how am I going to get this passed on the floor? And you know, will I be asked a lot of questions? And um, I, I just use um, the knowledge that I have. You know, my former student who has gone through this, right? And, and imagine the, the trials and, and tribulations that she has had to go through to overcome. So that's kind of the energy that I draw on uh, in those moments when I'm feeling like uh, a little overwhelmed, uh, you know, about about legislation and, and the process. So, and this is why representation it matters, uh, you know, and, and it doesn't mean just it means also the scope of your experience and your background and where you come from, and that includes your work as a social worker. What are some of the priorities you have going forward? Thank you for that question. And it goes right back to the students like it usually does with me, right? Um, I've come to find, I have a mental health advisory committee in my district and I have a a round table where either just constituents who are going through mental health issues or people who work in the field come to the table and talk to me about what's happening uh, and what some of the possible solutions are. One of the biggest issues right now that I'm hearing from service providers is youth who are um, a ward of the state. So whether they're like DCFS custody or they are incarcerated Incarcerated youth who have severe mental health issues, like a severe suicidal watch, um, there's no place for them in mental health hospitals. There's, there's nowhere for them to go. And it's um, it, this is now, since I've heard about this, I am now kind of like on this mission to do research and to meet as many people as I possibly can and to try to understand the problem and then try to figure out and formulate what, what kind of solution, what can be done for these children, because it's, um, you know, to me, a a child is a child, right? If you're a minor and you're in need of mental health services, then we need to find a way to to make sure that you're you're getting those services. Well, thank you so much for that. that It is so uh, hard to even, you know, imagine what the last year has been like for so many kids and the impact on their mental health. And and this is such an incredible, uh, really an incredible arena to, to step into and say, this is, we need to shine a light on this. So thank you so much for that. And I look forward to catching up with you very soon. I hope you don't mind that. I'll, I'll always uh, send you a message about like, hey, can you join me whenever I'm on the air? So I am grateful anytime you can uh, take some time out of your busy day. Thank you so much, Patty. Have a great rest of the day. Thank you. And everyone can visit uh, SenatorVia.com to find out more about her, the work that she does and uh, get involved, perhaps, if you live in that community. 